Hello everyone, this is Reza from Radicad and today I'm going to talk about a dynamic banding or binning solution using Power BI um, using DAX statements as you can see here I have age banding down in my x-axis and count of customers in, uh, in the chart but I can change and say I don't want 12 bands I want let's say only 4 bands uh, six bands uh, or let's say 20 bands and everything changes using that calculation let's see how it works To first understand what is the banding, let's talk about uh, that definition. Banding, grouping, bucketing, or binning, all of these are uh, talking about the same concept. Uh, talking about the scenario that you have a numeric value. Let me show you, for example, my customer table here. I have a numeric value, which is age. And you can see I have all different kinds of age values. If I show you different values here, you see there are different types of age values. Now, instead of showing a chart like this, which has every single age and count of people in that age, for example, this is count of people with age 50, this is count of people with age 51. Instead of that, I want to create buckets, uh, let's say between 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70. There are different ways you can do that. And one way is what we call as static banding or bucketing. And that way, uh, there are multiple methods for that. You can do it in Power Query, data transformation, using a calculate, uh, conditional column. You can do it in Power BI using grouping or binning. I've done videos for each of these. Or you can use a DAX calculation for that, which again, I've done a video for that. Now, all of those methods are static, which means uh, they are all using a static age band uh, table definition. Now, what if you want that to be dynamic, like what you have seen here? Like, uh, for example, you want to change the number of bands to be 3, 4, uh, or let's say 17, and you see that many bands dynamically changing. Everything that you want usually to be dynamic based on the user selection, it changes. You need to work with measures most of the time. Uh, so before starting that, let me show you additional tables that I've created. Um, so of course I have that customer table with the age column. Again, if you are interested to see how the age is calculated, check out the link down in the description to my blog article talking about how age can be calculated in Power Query. Uh, the actual file can be also downloaded in my um, uh, blog article. Uh, now I have this uh, customer table I also created an age band table using a simple generate series statement you see that I have created this uh, table from 0 to 120 at one at a time you can also create that using what if parameter uh, now I've created a relationship between this table Let's first talk about these two tables. Between these two tables, age band and customer based on the age. So this means that I can have a visualization like this, which has age in the axis and count of customer key or anything from customer that shows count of customers for each age. But this is not banding. Now let's talk about banding. For creating banding, I've done uh, a number of steps. First step was to create a parameter table and you can do that using modeling tab new parameter um, you can call this parameter table something with minimum maximum increment and default and this is the type of configuration i've done the parameter table that i've created uh, starting from one let's say the minimum bands is i want to have like all in one band up to 20 you can customize it whatever you like at one at a time when you use that new what if parameter that behind the scene creates this generate series uh, expression which you can again learn more about this using down, a link down in the description below so this creates that table right a table from 1 to 20 uh, for all of these let's say um, uh, how many bands as the input slicer it also brings up and slicer in uh, individual uh, in the report here is that slicer beside that it comes up with a measure 
which that measure is using uh, this expression selected value and it is telling me that what value is selected in that slicer so if i use that slicer and that measure this one is that measure right you see that when i change the slicer it shows me that measure right so that selected value is showing me that now i've added a few other measures as well one is minimum age one is maximum age minimum age is basically just minimum of all age values so this should be zero and maximum of all age values again if you are interested in learning about all check out my blog articles about that so this is minimum that is maximum now the interesting part here is the band size so i have the range minimum maximum and i have how many bands i have like for example if between 0 to 120 which is 120 years i want four bands then each band should be covering 30 years right this is a simple divide operation and that is how i calculated uh, the band size band size is divide uh, the result of maximum minus minimum divided by how many bands you see this int only because if uh, the divide returns something which is not integer and uh, this way i change it to become an integer because my age values are all integer there's no decimal value here right so that is how I calculated and you can see here that it is working just fine if I have like 9 bands, if I have 12 bands, it is like 10 years each, right? It creates like that. Now, the next part is the most important part, which is this uh, calculation, which, uh, which is the main part of this uh, dynamic banding. So this calculation is um, using parts of the same operation, so it is getting the minimum age, maximum age, using those measures that we have, band size, which we have calculated. Now, there are a number of steps here. One step is that it uh, create a table, kind of a virtual table. This is not a calculated table that you store as part of your model. It's a virtual table. It creates a virtual table from minimum age to maximum age by each band uh, size and the reason for that is that uh, this is the age band table i cannot create that statically so i create it dynamically and then here i use a selected value to find out what is the age in the x-axis band head is checking in that age band table to see which band is uh, the band for that selected age and it returns the band head for for that for example if the age is 15 band head probably if considering that each band is 10 years band head probably 10 right so it returns head based on the head based on the size i can find out what is the tail and considering those now i can return this that says if this is the band head because otherwise i don't want to return anything if it is band head then give me count rows of customer table for all age between head and tail right so altogether this calculation uh, works dynamically so for example when i set it this way uh, let's say i have uh, 12 bands each band is 10 years now you see that this is not really 10 bands the reason is that we don't have anyone with the age in the band of 10 20 that is why those two are missing but 30 this means that everyone in the age of 30 to 40 basically 30 to 39 is in this band calculation is done for that and 40 to 49 and the thing is that you can change this banding that way right so the main reason for this is that you give the user the ability to change the banding. Otherwise, banding can be done statically using other methods and that would provide faster response. Uh, I will um, do another video later on about how to do banding using the size of the band rather than the count, which is a little bit different from this calculation. Uh, you can download the file down in the description below. There's a link to my blog post. You can download it from there. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI.